welcome in the second session about solar photovoltaics uh, we will study about cells photovoltaic cells and modules the last slide of last presentation was this the output power from a photovoltaic cell is given as power equal to current into voltage so if low resistance is r then power is equal to i square r then if we substitute the characteristic cell equation then equation this equation of power becomes p is equal to so if you substitute the value of i so i l minus i zero exponential q v upon k t minus one into this voltage so this is equation number five then efficiency of the module the expression is eta max maximum efficiency is equal to maximum power p max divided by area of the cell or area of the photovoltaic panel divided by solar it is the solar radiation falling on the tilted surface in watt per meter square so equation five can be differentiated with respect to voltage v by setting the derivative equal to zero we will find out the maxima so maximum voltage v max can be obtained so that maximum voltage gives the maximum cell output p max so differentiating this expression dp by dv so we get this expression exponential q v max upon ktc 1 plus q v max upon ktc equal to 1 plus isc by i0 now in this this is a explicit or uh, implicit equation uh, which in which the value of v max can be found out by trial and error this will be clear in a example which we will cover so the load current i max that maximizes the power can be obtained by substituting isc is equal to il so il that is photo current has to be replaced by short circuit current so substituting the value of il is equal to isc the expression becomes isc my i is equal to isc minus i0 exponential qv upon kt minus 1 so i max is equal to isc minus i0 so this expression value of this v can be substituted here so by using equation 7 and 9 maximum cell power can be obtained so this is i max into in the previous uh, thing the value of v max can be obtained so p max is equal to i max into p max that's how maximum power can be obtained let's let's attempt some numerical examples on the topics covered so far so this is example one in which the threshold of wavelength is to find the threshold of wavelength for following compounds of semiconductor materials so these are the semiconductor materials cuprous sulfide sulfide cadmium sulfide and gallium arsenide the band gap energy is given in electron volt Cu2S has a band gap energy of 1.8 electron volt. Cadmium sulfide has a band gap of 2.42, and gallium arsenide has a band gap of 1.4 electron volt. We have to find out threshold of wavelength for the semiconductor material. So we will use the this expression band gap energy equation, which is Ep equal to Hc by lambda in this if we replace if we shift this lambda on this side the equation becomes lambda equal to hc by ep so in this expression h is the planck's constant which is 6.625 into 10 to minus 34 and c is the speed of light 3 into 10 to 8 meters per second so h is known c is known and ep this band gap energy is given this energy is given in electron volt we have to convert this electron volt energy into uh, joules now 
1 electron volt is equal to 1.602 into 10 to minus 19 joules. So with this we can convert this band gap energy in electron volts into joules. So these are the figures of band gap energy into joules. Now in this expression we know Ep in joules, H is known, C is known, lambda can be found out. Now this lambda we will have obtained in meters, further lambda is uh, expressed in microns. So the suitable multiplication has to be performed. So this is band gap energies and then in substituting in the equation we are finding out here the wavelength 6.89 into 10 to minus 7 and 5.13 into 10 to minus 7. Now here for gallium arsenide 8.86. Now wavelength of the cuprous sulphide is 0.69, cadmium sulphide is 0.59 and 0.89 the wavelength, threshold wavelength of gallium arsenide. Similarly, if we attempt for silicon, the band gap energy of silicon we know is 1.11 electron volt. So converted into joules, then wavelength is 1.12 into 10 to minus 6. If we convert this into micron, it is 1.12. So the band gap energy of silicon is 1.11 electron volt and the corresponding wavelength is the maximum wavelength is 1.12 micron. This is the second example. The dark saturation current of a solar cell is 1.75 into 10 raised to minus 8 amperes when the cell temperature is at a 35 degrees Celsius and the short circuit current is 4 amperes when placed in sunlight. We have to estimate the open circuit voltage VOC the maximum power output of the cell P max, the number of cells and the arrangement of the cells required to make a panel to supply 90 watt at 12 volt. Now as a part of a solution given quantities are I0 dark saturation current 1.75 into 10 to minus 8 temperature of the cell uh, expressed in uh, it is it is mentioned in degrees Celsius we have to convert this into Kelvin, so 308 Kelvin, short circuit current is 4 ampere. So first we will evaluate the open circuit voltage. Before that the value of Kt upon Q must be evaluated. So this is calculated in an excel sheet. I will just project the excel sheet here. So this is example 2. Panel desired power is 90 watt given. Panel desired voltage is 12 watt. I0 is given, ISC is given, T is given, Q is given, it is a constant, K is constant. So KT by Q, this uh, term comes out to be 0.026, while Q by KT, reciprocal terms, comes out to be 37.66 uh, V raised to minus 1. Now open circuit voltage can be op, uh, found out using this expression. This expression. So open circuit voltage. For open circuit voltage, we need to find out Kt by Q, which is 0 0.0265. Here, here it is calculated in the Excel sheet, 0 0.0265. And then if we substitute this value in the expression, we will get the value of open circuit voltage as 0.51 volt. So for estimating maximum power, uh, we, we have to determine the maximum voltage. So for maximum voltage, we have already uh, shown this is the expression. So if you substitute the value, now in this expression, the which values are known to us? The value of Q upon KTC is known, Q upon KTC is known, ISC and I0 is known, 1 plus and this, this thing is known. So this we have to estimate by trial and error. So for example, uh, we will say this 1 plus ISC by I0 is the RHS term, while well, this term we will evaluate with LHS. Now start with some value of Vmax and then match LHS and RHS. This I will demonstrate in Excel sheet. So here if I start with the value of say 0.44 then 
the value of RHS is uh, the value the difference between RHS and LHS is 0 0.48 okay if I go on decreasing the value 0 0.43 the difference is positive so the the answer lies between 0 0.44 which gives negative value and 0.43 which answer gives positive value so the exact solution lies between this 0.43 now I estimate here so I go on uh, using the values uh, uh, by trial and error and final value I will get as 0 0.4352 0 0.4352 so which value gives us the least difference in this because uh, uh, we can we can obtain this difference to be zero but in that case the number of decimal places will go on increasing so the value of uh, number of decimal places doesn't have any significance in vmax the value of vmax till 0.43 is sufficient for our calculation so we will take the value of 0.4352 as a solution here so the solution is vmax Vmax is 0 0.4352 obtained by trial and error. Now Imax will substitute in this expression and then get the value of 3.77 amperes. So the value of Vmax and Imax are obtained this way. Now maximum power is Imax into Vmax. So 1.64. 1.64 watt per cell. Now for meeting the desired voltage of 12 volt from the panel, we have to connect the cells in series. So number of cells in series is panel voltage 12 volt divided by maximum number maximum voltage of each cell so 12 by 0.4352 28 this is a round figure this cannot be a decimal place this cannot be a decimal figure this is a round figure so 28 is the rounded figure total number of cells required per panel to produce an output of 90 watt so total number of panels is 90 watt is the desired output divided by output per cell so 90 by 1.64 again this is a round figure of 55 we are getting so number of cells in parallel is total divided by number of cells in series so 55 by 28 again this is a round figure two rows so number of cells in parallel is two so if number of cells in series is two uh, 28 and number of cells in parallel two then the actual number of cells becomes 28 into 2 that is 56 actual maximum output of the panel will be 92 watt because 56 into 1.64 gives it to be 92 watt if each cell area if we assume that each cell area, each cell area is 130 cm square then the panel area will be 130 into 55 number of cells okay into uh, uh, so that is uh, uh, into 10 to minus 4 here it is to be it is minus 10 to minus 4 i will change this to be 10 less 2 so this is 10 less 2 minus 4 converted into meter square so in this 0 0.71 71 is the total cell area with solar radiation intensity of 700 watt per meter square the panel efficiency is 92 is actual output divided by 700 watt per meter square into 0 0.71 meter square so 18.4 percent is the panel efficiency that's how the calculations of a photovoltaic panel or a photovoltaic cell done. This is just for the information, the manufacturing sequence of a photovoltaic module. Start from the granules, which the granules are obtained from the sand. Sand is the raw material for uh, getting uh, silicon granules. So silicon granules are obtained, then these, these ingots are obtained in polysilicon. And then these ingots are uh, obtained in shape. Then these these ingots are cut with laser cutting using wafers. So in wafers, sorry. So these are the wafers of uh, silicon. Maybe polysilicon. Maybe uh, this is a single crystal silicon, and this is a polysilicon, polycrystal silicon. And then cells are manufactured. These cells, we uh, you can see that these cells are dark blue or blackish blue uh, they have a tilt a tint of a uh, dark blue or navy blue color uh, again this is a blue color this blue color is because of the 
silicon oxide. The cell is covered or coated with silicon oxide, uh, which works as a anti-reflecting uh, agent. So reflection, it doesn't reflect. So anti-reflection agent is coated here. So that's why this cell appears to be bluish or dark blue. And finally, the cells are assembled in a module. So this is a single crystal silicon cell, and this is a poly crystal multicon, uh, poly silicon, poly crystalline silicon cell. This is just uh, the a demo of uh, how a solar photovoltaic panel looks. Crystalline silicon, byproduct, mono silicon, and multi silicon. So a, a, a collect or a panel looks like this. Again, the thin film, thin film photovoltaic model looks like this, which is cadmium telluride, copper, indium, gallium selenide, or amorphous silicon. This is just to uh, have an idea about how the the photovoltaic panels look. That's how this is the appearance of the thin film cell, thin film uh, module. This is a mono silicon module. And this is a polysilicon cell has this appearance this is a typical size of a silicon cell a silicon module now the each panel has a positive and negative terminals which are open for connection further connection the back side of the module looks like this is a back view of the module which has two connections two terminals this is called a junction max and all these dimensions are shown here and this is a cross section here this is a cross section of the suntech type module typical sun uh, suntech module specifications are electrical characteristic are maximum power at standard temperature condition or standard not temperature condition standard test condition standard test conditions are uh, 20 uh, 5 degrees Celsius and 1000 watt per uh, meter square of uh, radiation intensity. So maximum power at standard test condition is 335 watt. Optimum operating voltage is 37.7 volt. Optimum operating current is 8.89 ampere. So this is maximum Vmax and Imax. Then VOC is 46.5 short circuit current is 9.51 module efficiency 17.2 operating module temperature minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 85 degrees Celsius system voltage is 1500 volt DC maximum series fuse rating is 20 ampere this is a safety uh, precaution a safety provision power tolerance is plus minus 5 watt so you may get 330 watt or uh, 340 watt Nominal operating cell temperature NOCT is 45 plus minus 2 degrees Celsius. Temperature coefficient is given here minus 0.41 percent per degree Celsius. With increase in the temperature of the cell, the power output of uh, the module goes on decreasing. So what is the extent of decrease in the power? So power decreases with 41 percent with each increase in the uh, temperature which each degrees Celsius uh, temperature increase of the cell from the standard test condition. Again, temperature coefficient of open circuit voltage. Open circuit voltage also decreases uh, with uh, increase in the cell temperature. But the ISC, short circuit current increases marginally, very much, 0.067. It, it increases very marginally with increase in the temperature. So these are the typical module specifications. Typical module characteristic of the same which we have seen here. Uh, these uh, 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 module characteristic of this module which is shown and the characteristic which are shown here. So the IV characteristic of this module. So these characteristic show the IV characteristic. These are the IV characteristic at different solar radiation intensity. So you can see on y axis there is current and on uh, x axis voltage. Now this blue thing, this blue line indicates the IV characteristic 
at 100 watt per meter square. And as the solar radiation intensity goes on decreasing from 1000, 800, 600, 400, 200, the ISC, short circuit current, goes on decreasing. So at this point, it is 1000. This, this uh, characteristic is corresponding to 1000 watt per meter square. Then this characteristic is obtained at 800. And this characteristic is at 600. This is at 400. And this is at 200. You can see as the solar radiation intensity goes on decreasing, the ISC, short circuit current, also goes on decreasing. What happens with increase in the uh, solar radiation intensity? There is a marginal increase in the uh, open circuit voltage, which may is not considerable. Now let us concentrate on this characteristic. This is a power characteristic. This it indicates power on y-axis and then voltage on x-axis. Again, these characteristics are obtained. This power characteristic has one maximum at one point at one voltage Vmax, you will get the maximum power. So these are this is these are the points of Vmax corresponding to different solar radiation intensity. Again, same solar radiation intensities are obtained. You can say the this is this this is obtained at 1000 watt per meter square. Then second is 800 watt per meter square, 600 watt per meter square. So as the solar radiation intensity goes on decreasing, the power output also goes on decreasing. So this is a typical current voltage and power curve of a SunTech module. Provision of bypass module. All the SPV modules have a provision of a bypass diode. In these modules, these the, the identical cells are assembled on the module. When light falls on the PV module, same current is generated in solar cells which flow through the module. Now due to some reason if one of the solar cell gets shaded you can see here in the in this snapshot if if a if a group of cells you can see here the shades uh, the shade is for shadow is falling and then these cells are shaded cells of the module are shaded. If one of the solar cells or the group of solar cells get shaded, then the current generated by that cell is lower than the rest of the cells. So since the cells are all connected in series and the shaded solar cell will resist the current flow generated by non-shaded solar cells generating full current. So the cells which are open to the solar exposed to the solar radiation, they generate full current and the cells which are not exposed to the sunlight which are falling in the shade they don't generate any current so in this case the shaded solar cell becomes a load so these 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 cells become a load on the other cells now power generated by other cells may get dissipated in shaded solar cells due to this what happens the shaded solar cell becomes extremely hot so this 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 part of the module or this part of the array becomes extremely hot forming hotspots here. Sometimes what happens, the hotspots may sometimes give rise to extremely high temperature. It may break the, so you can see here. So the module becomes hot and sometimes the glass cover, which is provided, a very thin glass cover provided on the cell that may break due to the heat. Or in the worst case, it may cause fire also. So therefore this local heating is avoided. This local heating is avoided by providing a bypass diode. So a bypass diode is uh, provided to avoid destructive effect of local heating due to shading of modules. Now the bypass diode is provided like this. So if the cell is in series, it has negative and positive terminals, negative and positive terminals. So if they are connected in series. Bypass diode is connected in a reverse polarity. So this is negative terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the diode and negative terminal again is connected to positive here and then positive is connected to negative. So a bypass diode connected in parallel but with reverse polarity in the cellar cell. So due to this what happens in normal condition that in no shading condition the bypass diode is operated in reverse bias condition. So when these, these cells are conducting when light is falling on these cells it, it operates in the reverse mode so it, it prevents the current flow. And then the smooth current, there will be a smooth current flow through these cells and the cells are conducting. But if a series 
connected cell is shaded if the if the if this series is shaded reverse bias will appear across these cells and then the forward bias will appear uh, it will work as a fire forward bias so reverse bias will appear across the same this reverse bias will operate as forward bias voltage for a bypass diode so this reverse bias will operate as a forward bias for this bypass diode and it starts conducting thus bypass diode will carry the current bypassing the shaded cell and protecting the solar cells from overheating ideally each solar cell must have a bypass diode however due to cost restrictions practically a bypass diode is provided on a series of 10 to 15 cells as shown here so a series of cells are provided and then one bypass diode is provided on the module so this is the purpose of a bypass diode then there is also a provision of black blocking diode on a spv module in standalone pv systems which are not connected to any grid or any other external connection so these pv modules are used to either supply the load during daytime or to charge the battery okay in a daytime energy generated by pv module and supplied to battery so these these systems they generate the energy and uh, supply the energy to battery charge the battery but in the night when there is no sunlight the spv module stops supplying energy and become idle now during night what may happen the charged batteries may start supplying energy back to spv modules this amounts to energy loss so this is avoided by providing a blocking diode in the module so blocking diode prevents the discharging of battery into the spv module so this is the, the provision of the blocking diode is provided in the terminal here in the reverse manner suppose this is a spv module this is a spv module negative and positive terminals and then on a, on one terminal the blocking diode is provided with a reverse polarity so positive is connected to negative terminal of the diode and this this is connected like this so it provides it prevents energy flow back into the spv module in the night in the daytime the energy will flow from the module to the charging of the batteries or to the towards the batteries so there must be a provision of blocking diode as well as the bypass diode on a solar pv module so the engineer has to ensure in a commercial modules the engineer has to ensure that the provision of blocking diode and bypass diode is there or those diodes are provided on spv module now modules connected in series so each module has a one positive terminal and negative terminal if all these if the if suppose there are five modules connected in an array and then negative terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the second and same case follows in all the case so negative connected to positive again negative connected to positive here similarly if such type of connections are done then this arrangement is a series arrangement of modules in series arrangement of modules if we add modules in series it increases the array voltage so if desired array voltage is say 24 volt if desired array voltage is 24 volts and if one module provides one module provides 4 volts then we have to connect 24 by 4 that is six number of modules in series so adding modules in series increases the array voltage so it is shown here in the iv characteristic of the module so if you go on adding this is module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 and module 5 so if you go on adding the modules no change will happen in the short circuit current but the voltage will go on increasing voc will go on increasing and the voltage uh, generated in the modules will increase Similarly, if modules are connected in parallel, how parallel connections are done? Suppose these are four modules, M1, M2, M3, and M4. So again, these are positive and negative terminals. If these positive terminals are all connected, if all positive terminals are connected and they are collected at the end, similarly, negative terminals are connected, all negative terminals are connected and they are collected at the end between the load. Load is connected between these, between these terminals 
then this type of arrangement is parallel arrangement. Adding modules in parallel increases array current. So this depends on the uh, this this arrangement. The parallel arrangement uh, determines uh, the load made by the current, this current requirement of the uh, application. So it is shown here in on IV diagram. If you go on adding this is module one, module two, module three, and module four. ISC will go on increasing if they are connected in parallel. There is no uh, difference in, there is no change in the open circuit voltage if the modules are connected in parallel. So this, uh, these provisions, series and parallel, these are made uh, use of in the application for the photovoltaic systems. Now what is the effect of solar radiation intensity? on uh, the, uh, the characteristic of a module. If solar radiation, we have seen this previously in a, in, a, uh, in a typical module. As the solar radiation intensity goes on increasing, the ISC, short circuit current goes on increasing and the current generated by the module also goes on increasing. This we have seen already in a typical module here. So as the solar radiation go intensity goes on increasing, the ISC also goes on increasing. Now the effect of temperature. So as the cell temperature goes on in increases, then the open circuit voltage decreases. Okay, there is a decrease in the open circuit voltage and there is a slight marginal increase in the ISC. But the cumulative effect is that the cell efficiency drops. Because you can see here the difference in cell difference in the decrease in the open circuit voltage is considerable with a decrease increase in the cell temperature. On the other hand, increase in ISC is marginal. So the result is the efficiency of the cell or the output of the cell decreases and the efficiency of the cell drops. So this is an undesired. So cell increase in the cell temperature is the undesired effect. So there must be some means or, or in photovoltaic systems, the, uh, the temperature of the cell has to be uh, kept in check so that the cell temperature may be um, restricted. So in hot environments, for example, if a photovoltaic uh, array is installed uh, in some hot climate, the efficiency of that system will always be less if the same uh, area or the same photovoltaic array is installed in some hill station where the ambient temperature is less. Naturally, uh, where the ambient temperature is, le uh, is less, the efficiency of the photovoltaic system will be higher. Now, this is just a representative um, list of manufacturers of SPV modules as far as my uh, knowledge is concerned. This is uh, totally uh, given for the uh, academic purpose or this just for the information purpose. Uh, so these are the, uh, this is with the Indian context. So the Indian manufacturers are the Tata Power, Vikram Solar, Vari Energy, Moser Bayer, MV Solar, Bale, Websol Energy, Kotakurja, Rolta, Nevitas, Alpex, Synergy. At a particular date of recording these, these tables, these, these companies were operating. Now these companies, whether are there or not, uh, uh, a viewer has to cross-verify with whether these companies are still working or not. Uh, imported or international, in international market, the manufacturers of SPV modules are Rene Sola, Sun Power, AUO, Panasonic, REC, CSUN, JA Solar, Zinco, Sante, SFC, Canadian Solar, First Solar, Anwa QCell, Tian, Sharp, and Yingli. Besides this, there are again many manufacturers, short solar and all. Uh, this is just a representative, a very limited uh, list of manufacturers. So here uh, we will stop our discussion and then uh, continue our discussion in the next uh, session about the systems and design. In next session, uh, session we will discuss about the solar photovoltaic systems and how to design uh, 